Hey, what's up guys? My name is Achano and welcome back to my OpenGL series. So, today we're going to be talking all about vertex arrays and how we can actually abstract them. If you don't know what a vertex array is, check out the video that I made explaining what vertex arrays are and how to use them and why we need to use them. As I mentioned in that video, they are kind of optional to use, I guess, but the trend seems to be moving towards using them. So, semantics aside, details aside, let's actually get into this and figure out how we can abstract a vertex array in OpenGL. So first of all, what is an, uh, why exactly should we be using a vertex array and what, does this, what is the goal of this abstraction, right? Why do we want to abstract? This is another thing that you can actually think about when you're abstracting something. It's not necessarily like, you know, let's just move this out into my own classes, but why are you moving it into your own classes, right? Why do, why do I have to create a class specifically for this kind of concept, right? Why can't I just use OpenGL code? A lot of the times it seems to be just to, because I want it in my own namespace and I want to call it my own thing, right? That's not really a reason for abstracting something. I mean, it can be in a lot of cases because you obviously want to kind of streamline your API and keep it consistent. So sometimes you just end up creating a very, very thin wrapper that does nothing else but, but basically change the name of a function. And that's also kind of okay. But when you're thinking about vertex arrays and when you think about all these open gel concepts, have a think about why am I abstracting this? Why am I moving this out into a class? What is the purpose of this? What do I hope to achieve with this? And specifically, the goal of that is so that you can tell yourself, this is the list of, this is the list of features I need. These are my requirements. Now let's build something that, that can actually facilitate that. For us, what a vertex array needs to be able to do is hopefully tie together a vertex buffer with some kind of layout right? So vertex buffers are just buffers with data. They have no actual concept of like, you know, the first three floats are a position and they're floats and they're this big and all of that. There's no concept of types or size or anything like that. It's just a plain buffer of actual data. We just have a bunch of bytes. So how, like, what is, what is each byte? What, like how big is each vertex? All of that kind of stuff. That is what a vertex array is really for. It's supposed to tie together that buffer with an actual layout. Um, and you can add an index buffer into that and do a bunch of other stuff, which we can talk about later. But that's that's the basic idea of why they exist in the first place. And a vertex array object is OpenGL's open way of kind of storing that state. So what we need to do as we think about creating this API right now is we need something that hopefully I can just create a vertex array and then I can maybe give it a certain layout and then add a buffer to it or something like that. Or maybe I just create a vertex array, which is a series of buffers, can be one or more. And then I just tell the vertex array that I've made, hey, I want this kind of layout. And hopefully that'll kind of be enough for like what we're trying to do. And then later on, when I bind the vertex array, I, I should be able to just call like vertex array or bind on my own ob on, on my own object. And that should kind of tie everything together and actually, you know, bind the array in terms of OpenGL. So think about it that way. Um, hopefully that will make more sense as I start abstracting this, but the, really the thing, that is, the thing that is important for us is we want to be able to define some kind of layout. And this layout may be something that we also want to, um, have exist on the CPU side so that we can maybe read our actual vertex buffer data. This is another useful thing for debugging. It's not like 100% necessary for us to do this because there are tools that let us actually debug data that's on the GPU using the layout we've specified for the GPU and all that. But still, CPU side, sometimes it's useful to actually see our vertex buffer data and actually be able to read it and like interpret it. And for that, we do need a layout. So we do need a way of actually storing this stuff on the CPU. Uh, like one example of that just off the top of my head is like not just for debugging, but maybe if we wanted to like have like some kind of picking cache so that we can actually read each triangle of our model so that when the user like clicks clicks somewhere on the screen with their mouse button, we can actually select that object. And for that, we need to fire array and actually see if it intersects a triangle that is part of our model. And for that, we, we might want to, like, we might want to actually store the vertex buffer on the CPU side so that we can actually, you know, do that rate kind of collision test against that triangle. So that's like one example of why we, we might want to do that. But my point being that um, it's useful for us to actually create some kind of like buffer layout object which is another thing that we'll do, we'll actually do today. So anyway, I know I've been talking for like five minutes now, so let's just cut all that. 
I'm not going to cut all it literally in the video, but we are going to jump into some code right now and we're going to see how we can actually abstract this vertex array object stuff. So looking through our code over here, the big part that's kind of, I guess, part of our vertex array is really just kind of this, but it's also this, right? This might not seem like it's part of it because we don't necessarily need to tie this to a vertex array. We could just have a single vertex array and keep resetting this. I talk a lot about this. I am probably going to make a dedicated video talking about the differences between that two because I keep explaining myself. I probably shouldn't be. Um, but we can, of course, either have one global vertex array object and keep changing the layout of each buffer as we bind it, or we can kind of keep everything in vertex array objects. I think the vertex array object video covers that. So just vertex arrays, watch that. Um, but anyway, this is kind of what ties everything together. Uh, or rather vertex arrays are tied with a certain vertex buffer and an actual um, layout. So what I, what I might want to do, right, if I just kind of loosely just draft up some code basically, is I might want to be able to say vertex array VA, right? Um, it doesn't necessarily need to take anything. Then we might want to like add a buffer or something. I don't know, add buffer VB. And then we might want to add a layout or something like that, right? Um, and then the layout we might define separately. Maybe I'll have a class called buffer layout and then I can maybe somehow define, you know, maybe I push like the first thing. Well, really we just have like float. So maybe I have like three floats or something that I actually add to that. I don't know, something like that. And then I add the layout. So this is looking pretty reasonable to me. Um, add buffer might take in an index. It might be useful to kind of set a buffer at a certain index as well, because we can have multiple buffers that might tie in with layouts as well. There's a lot of really complicated things that you can actually do here. As I said, like with, with this series, the way that we're kind of going to take it is just as we go. So when I require a feature, I will extend the API to have it. I'm not going to try and write a complete API, like just like straight away right now, because that that's basically impossible to do. Okay, so judging from this, this should be enough to get something working. And then if I want to actually bind it and all of that, I could probably just do, you know, va.bind. Um, and finally with this draw, the, the drawing code will kind of stay the same because that'll be handled by our renderer anyway. But this kind of bind vertex array code kind of should be uh, becoming va.bind like that. Okay, and let's actually just get rid of this VA bind. Okay, so based, based on what we've just done here, let's try and actually create this vertex array thing. So I'm gonna right click here, go to add new item. Yeah, I'm just gonna do this live in front of you guys. I haven't actually prepared this earlier, so uh, hopefully this goes well. But anyway, so class vertex array. As I said, I want to be able to have some kind of buffer thing. Um, so potentially what I might want is, well, we'll have the constructor and a destructor, and that's going to basically just hit open jail and actually do what we need it to do. Um, when we actually create a layout, I mean, when you think about it, this, this vertex, a true pointer applies to the currently bound buffer. Um, so all we really need to do is, I guess we do need to, like, once we actually create the vertex buffer and we add it, um, we do need to bind it to a certain layout, don't we? So maybe maybe it's not even worth having vertex arrays actually store vertex buffers or references to vertex buffers. It might just be useful for us to actually bind a certain layout with a vertex buffer that's currently bound, if that makes any sense. So I'm actually gonna do that because it's gonna be a little bit easier and faster for us to do. So instead of us containing buffers or anything, what we are going to do is contain um, potentially a layout in fact, what I might do, and this is a bit of a random thing that I was thinking of doing. Um, what we actually might do is change this around so that what this literally does is just set everything up on OpenGL side and not really store any state on the CPU at all. So, um, because really all we need to do, like the benefit of this is that we don't need to keep setting the layout every single time because the vertex array, it's so hot in here, the vertex array actually stores that state for us. So what we just need to do is basically say, Hey, here's a buffer. Here's, here's a layout, make it work together. So let's, let's at least start with that and we'll see where we get. So I'm going to say void, I don't know, add buffer. I'm not great at naming things. It's hard, man. It's hard. So what we'll do is we'll take in a vertex buffer here, um, VB, and then we'll also have a layout. So buffer vertex buffer layout, I'll say layout. All right. So two things that need to go created. So first of all, we already have vertex buffers. Obviously I can just include that here. 
Um, and of course I've gone ahead and created this not in the source folder. So let's move that into the source folder here. Um, okay, good. So we have vertex buffer and then, uh, which is not being included. Yes, it is just IntelliSense, I guess. Um, and then vertex buffer layout is something I'll make here as well. So we'll say vertex buffer layout. And this is kind of going to be our layout class, which will probably have some kind of, I might just make this, I'll probably move this in actually. Oh, we'll need that though. So we'll say vertex buffer element or layout element or something like that. I don't know, again, names are hard, man. So what this is going to really do is just have a vector filled with these elements, vertex buffer element, M elements. Um, we'll include vector. Okay, and then what we can do with this vertex buffer layout is really just I'll write something and it'll be a template um, that we can actually just push uh, some kind of value in, or rather we can push a type in really. That's why it's a template. You'll, you'll see how this works in a minute. Um, for this case, we're just gonna static assert false because we don't actually uh, handle this. This is if basically the type is unmatched because what we're about to do, what we're about to do next is actually create a bunch of template specializations. So this will be a push for, let's just say float, um, where we can push a number of floats in. And then what this is really going to do is m elements dot push back. Um, and what we'll do is, so let's think about what we actually need in this. If we look at vertex attribute pointer, we need an index. Um, we need a count. So we've kind of got count. I guess count is what we specify here. So we definitely need a count here. I'll just make an unsigned int count. Um, we need a type, which we can handle. We need normalized. Um, and we need a stride and I guess we also have an offset. So really all we need here is uh, inside uh, vertex buffer element, we just need unsigned int count. We need the type, which is also an unsigned int because it's an open gel type. And then finally we need one more thing um, and that was whether or not it's normalized. So we'll just say bool normalized. So count and normalized we'll leave in like that. Um, I might not, I mean, for floats and stuff like that, we don't really need normalized. We might just leave normalized out for a bit. So push back is going to push back one of these. So we're going to have the count, which is just count. Uh, we're going to have the type, which I'm actually gonna to move to be the first thing. So we have type counts and normalized. So the type is going to be in this case, in this case, GL float, because we're, this is the float specialization. So GL float counts going to be count. Uh, and normalized. For now, we're just gonna hard code to false. Now we are going to have to include OpenGL to actually do this. Um, you could just, if you were dealing with multiple APIs and you didn't want to include OpenGL, um, then I think this is just in here glue, right? Then you could just basically have some, you, you, you could just copy across the actual definitions of all of those defines, right? So GL float has a numeric value. You could be like, I mean, if I go into this, you know, you could just copy a bunch of these and literally put them into your source code so that you're not actually including the entire OpenGL header because you might not have access to that and you still want this code to compile on platforms that might not support OpenGL. That's an example of what you could do um, because I'm not trying to tie this into be OpenGL specific, but in this case, obviously it is. So that's that done. I'm just gonna make some space here. Um, so we have float. Uh, let's try like one more at least. I, again, I'm just gonna add these as they come in, I think. So unsigned int might be gl unsigned int as the type, count and false, right? This is pretty basic. Um, one thing I might also do is in the case of like, let's just say we have unsigned chars as well. So like bytes basically, those may, we, we may wanna keep those normalized basically. So I might do that and this would be unsigned byte. Okay. 
So just an example of how we can basically automate this. Now, I know this might seem a bit confusing because I'm just writing code and not really explaining much of it probably, um, but all this is gonna tie in together when we actually are in the Vertex Array class actually setting everything up for ourselves. So that's the layout. Um, if we go down here, we need a few things. First of all, um, we need a way to actually get the stride, right? So get stride definitely needs to be a thing. Um, and I'll probably keep track of that. So I'll just say return stride. Um, we also need a way to get these actual elements. So vector vertex buffer element M, uh, sorry, get elements const return M elements, pretty long line, hopefully you can see it. Um, so stride wise, we might just maintain a stride. So unsigned int M stride. Um, I'm actually just going to implement this whole thing, I think in the header file. Uh, so we'll set the stride to zero to begin with. And then every time we do this, uh, we basically want to say M stride plus equals the size of the actual thing that we're pushing back. So, um, in this case, it's going to be four bytes. Uh, what you probably want to do is write some kind of function that converts a GL, you know, like type ID thing. So a GL type enum into an actual size so that you can basically just be like size of GL float and that'll be fine. Um, but we're just going to hard code this for now. So we, you, you could also write size of float, I suppose, or size of GL float like that. That'd probably be reasonable. We'll keep it as that for now, I think. Um, GL uint and uh, this will be the uh, GL byte. Okay, cool. So this is pretty simple here. I hope you kind of understand what's going on here. Um, we're just maintaining basically a bunch of uh, actual elements that make up our vertex buffer or rather we're maintaining like, you know, if we have two floats here, three floats there, blah, 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 we've got an actual layout for our buffer. And what we can do, like the index of each element is obviously the index as it appears in our actual vector. And then when it comes time to bind all this or rather when it comes time to bring a vertex buffer with a vertex layout, we can actually uh, set that up in vertex array. So let's do that here. So I'll include vertex buffer layout, and I'll actually have to create a CPP file for our vertex array. So let's just quickly create that. Vertex array done. Okay, so include vertex array. If I go back here, I'm just going to right click and create method implementations for everything. Um, so the beginning, we won't start with anything really. And then add buffer, really all that's going to do is bind the buffer. And then it's going to basically set all this stuff up. So we have these two lines of code, which is our buffer layout. I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna paste that in here. Um, we're going to include, I guess, the renderer, which will inc should include OpenGL and the GL call macro. And then what I'm going to do is basically just use const auto here because I don't want to type out the whole type. We'll get our elements equals layout dot get elements. And then for each uh, const auto element in elements, we're going to actually do all this stuff. So um, I'm actually going to change this to be a for normal for loop. So for an i equals, this will be an unsigned int, unsigned int i equals zero, i is less than elements dot size i plus plus const auto element equals elements i. So I'm just iterating through that vector of elements that we have over here in our actual uh, layout class. This so this thing here. Um, and we're going to enable i as our actual vertex attribute array. And finally, this is going to be i. This is going to be element dot uh, count. This is going to be element dot type, this is going to be element dot normalized. So if it is normalized, right, because this is actually a Boolean, let me just drop this down online so you guys can see. Um, if it's normalized, if that's set to true, uh, I mean, to be honest, I might just go back here and actually store it as an int or something. Um, so we'll say unsigned uh, char normalized, we don't need to store it as an int. Um, although with alignment, memory alignment, it probably will be an int anyway, but doesn't matter, unsigned char normalized. So basically we'll just set this to be gl false, gl true. And this will be gl false as well. 
And that way, all we have to do is in vertex array, we don't have to do any kind of transformation, we can just do element.normalized. Um, now this is the stride, so this will be uh, layout dot get stride, and then this will be the offset. So the offset we can actually calculate here. So unsigned int offset equals zero. We pump that in here, offset, and then we simply increment the offset. So offset plus equals uh, element dot type, uh, sorry, element dot count. And we do need to know the element size, which I don't think I've, I'm actually storing here, which is great. Um, so uh, we also need to count, cast this to a constant void pointer, by the way, that's that error. Okay, so we need to know the size of each type. So what I might do is actually do that thing that I was talking about doing, which is inside uh, vertex buffer layout, I might actually inside vertex buffer element, I'll make a static unsigned int get size. Uh, uh, get size of type or something. And then this will basically be unsigned int type switch uh, on type. And then case, you know, GL float return for um, unsigned int for, and the only other one we support, which is unsigned char we'll return one. Sorry, I'm on byte, which I might have just yeah, that's good. Okay, cool. Um, so now this becomes. Well, let me just align this stuff. Return zero, and we should assert false here. Um, and I guess that assertion stuff is inside our renderer. Whoops. So let me just include the renderer. Okay, cool. So there we go. I like to indent these a bit like that. Um, but there we go. So four, four and one, obviously this is, uh, make sure you get these right and make sure you support all the types that you currently support. We're just doing three. When we add some more types, we will expand all of this, um, get size of type I can now use with this. So instead of this uh, being that it'll just be buffer, sorry, vertex, uh, buffer element, get size of type. Um, and then the type is gel float. And then this will be the same, but for unsigned int. And then this will be the same, but for unsigned byte. Okay, looks pretty good to me. And now obviously inside our vertex array, we can actually say offset plus equals element count times vertex buffer element, get size of type, element dot type. Okay, so that is our add buffer function. You can see it does quite a lot of things, but the main thing it does is bind the actual vertex buffer and then set up all that layout. Now we have to actually create the vertex array, obviously, so let's do that. I'm gonna go back to the header file, add an unsigned int m renderer id, just like that. Um, we're going to set it up here, I guess. So let's just go down here and copy what we have from application, which is basically this code. So we're going to uh, m render ID here, and then we'll we'll bind it. Well, we don't have to bind it in this case. Um, in the destructor, I will delete vertex arrays one, and then um, m render ID like that. Okay, that looks pretty good. And then over here, we do we should bind it. So I'll just call bind. Um, now we don't have a bind function yet, so let's add that. So we'll have our buffer and then bind const and unbind const. I'll make those using visual assist again. And then we'll basically call gl bind vertex array and render ID. And then for unbind, we'll just bind zero. Okay, so we have where we bind the vertex array, we bind the buffer that we want to deal with, and then we set up a layout for it. And that looks pretty good to me. So let's test this out. Back in application, I'm going to include vertex array. And then I'm going to go back down here. Uh, we make a vertex array, we make a vertex buffer. Um, we're going to make a vertex buffer layout. Now all we have in our example here is just this, right? So we know that from this actual GL call, we basically just set up two floats. So all I have to do here is I can get rid of all this and just do layout.push float two like that, that should be it. And then v va dot add buffer, vb and layout just like that. 
Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Um, it is pretty straightforward. And if we go down here, instead of uh, bind vertex array, we should just be able to do VA to bind and everything should be good. So let's hit F5 and hopefully this works because I just totally improvised all of that. Okay, so we are getting an error here. This looks like almost a warning really, um, but we basically should be having unsigned in account and not in count. So I'm just going to change this type to be unsigned like that for all of these. Obviously we can't have a negative count anyway. Um, all right, that was good, F5. Okay, and we get a triangle, so we don't get an actual square, so maybe I've done something wrong. Uh, let's go back to here and see what's up. Um, so we had, okay, our vertex buffer has four vertices, so that looks pretty good. We're definitely drawing six still, um, and that's all good. Let's actually debug this, I guess. So let's go into uh, our actual layout here, and inside add buffer, I'm just gonna place a breakpoint here. Let's close this memory view, make some more space here. F11 to step in. And then, okay, so we definitely bind that vertex array. It does have a, it does have a, a real renderer ID. Vertex buffer bind will bind that. Elements, we have one element. It is, the type is blah, blah, blah. Size is, count is two, normalized is zero. Looks pretty good to me so far. Um, step into here. We enable this, index zero, of course. Element dot count is two. Type is that normalizes that layout gets tried what's the stride four four seems ah so there's the problem the stride is four but it obviously should be four times the count which in this case is two so what we need to do is go back to vertex buffer layout and make sure that the stride is actually the size of type times the count so i forgot to multiply it by the count in fact i might move the may, might move it and make the count first so count times the stride all right there we go, so take two, F5. And there we go, we get our actual square as usual. All right, so that's it. That's gonna wrap up this implementation that we've quickly thrown together of a vertex array and how to actually abstract that as well as the layout part. The big thing here, I guess, to capture is this actual layout idea, right? We're actually providing our own layout in a very kind of high level sense. We're basically saying that, hey, I have two floats here deal with it OpenGL and that's really really useful because if you were if you were to use like multiple rendering APIs in an engine or whatever you obviously would want to have a generic way of saying this is the layout of my buffer and that's exactly what we've done over here obviously with this code if we had several kind of things maybe we had you know a 3D kind of position then a 3D normal and then like a 2D texture coordinate we could just do this uh, when we actually add maths and, and mathematical types and stuff, we might even have something like math vec2 and just being able to say we have one vec2 here, uh, maybe one vec3 for the actual position or whatever, that would be useful as well. And we can really expand this to be pretty good in the future. All right, so any questions that you guys have, leave them in the comments below. This episode I think was a little bit different than all the other ones. I mean, I kind of just programmed live in front of you guys. This almost felt a bit, a little bit of like a live stream and me actually explaining what I'm doing along the way. Uh, let me know what you think of this kind of format. As we start to get into more serious OpenGL things, I'm not sure if I can take this slow. I mean, Mike, I've been recording for 29 minutes and 50 seconds at this point. Like it's, this is gonna be a huge episode and I basically got through this stuff as quickly as I could. Um, so yeah, definitely let me know what you think about this. If you were able to follow along and all of that, hopefully, hopefully you were, and I don't need to kind of explain too much more. Hopefully most of this made sense, but other than that, leave a like if you enjoyed this video. If you want to help support this series, you can go to patreon.com forward slash the Cherno. Huge shout out as always to all of my wonderful patrons that make this stuff possible. Um, definitely help support the series there if you like what I'm doing here and want to see more, because this stuff really wouldn't be here without all those wonderful people. Um, next time we're going to talk about shaders and how we can actually abstract that. That's basically, I think, looking at this, that's like all we have left, I think. Oh, and then, and then of course the renderer. Um, so we're definitely on our way to kind of abstracting a lot of this stuff. Actually, while I'm here, I noticed that we still have this vertex array code. So let's just remove all of that vertex array code. So we, we have this nice and set up like that. Beautiful. And then by vertex array zero and all of that, we don't really need that there. So we'll just kind of leave it as is. And in fact, since we are kind of testing unbinding everything, I might just call VA dot unbind instead of which just does that basically. Now I did write quite a bit of code this episode. If you would like access to the source code, then you can go to patreon.com forward slash the journal, help support the series and you will get access to episode by episode kind of source code for all of this stuff. Could be useful 
useful because of course uh, I did write quite a bit of code and if you got something wrong it's a really good way to kind of compare and make sure that everything is working for you. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Next time shaders, then after that probably renderer, and then after that we really have to add maths and stuff like that. And then we'll move on to some more exciting things like textures and like actually getting graphics and stuff together, which should be a lot of fun. Oh, this series is, is quite a bit of work. Let me tell you, open jail. Anyway, see you guys next time. Goodbye. Thank you.